So welcome, Michael. Nice to have you with us. Hello, Peter. It's great to be here. We're at the other end of the country, but we are close. We are at least on the same island, and that is a good thing. And uh, soon we'll be able to visit. Soon we'll be able to visit you. I've just realised I've already forgotten to do something. I have to inform everybody that this is being recorded and streamed on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, so yes, you're in, you're in Dublin, are you, Michael? I am, yes. I'm, um, I'm currently in my office here, which is at the, at, at the bottom of my garden with my cat over here on the left hand side. Now, I didn't know my cat stank, but my wife assures me that the cat stinks. But because I live with the cat, I can't smell it. So that's just a little bit of humanity, you know, to get the ball rolling on this. Just in case we see the cat, what is the cat's name? The cat's name is Pussy. Okay. Good. Well, maybe Pussy will make an appearance later. Um, let's, uh, let's 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 move on to to, to musical matters, if if we may, um, and indeed uh, to your group and Luna. Um, just give us a little bit of background as 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 to how you came to form a Nuna and maybe your impetus for that. Was it personal? Uh, were there other reasons for, for for starting up? Very good question. Um... I'm asked this question a lot and I give the same answer all the time. And I think probably saying what I've said already about it is um, important to keep consistent because Anuna at this point is just coming up to 35 years old. Um, and as a result, it's kind of like a historical footnote rather than um, something which is a choir. It, the effect that it has had on, on, on the way people sing in groups um, I discovered when I travelled to America, to the American Choral Directors Association Biennial Conference in 2011, is enormous, and I just didn't know. And when I set Anuna up originally, it was supposed to be a, an antidote to a lot of the thoughtless excesses that I saw as permeating choral music as a whole, and people tend to misconstrue what those are. For me, because we are steeped in the English tradition, particularly of singing, um, it, it, for me, every single country has a community of singers and every single community in the world has a distinctive voice. So there's nothing really switches me off more that let's say, for example, I'm in America and I hear a choir that could quite easily be singing in Westminster Abbey because and also, I don't mind them doing it, but I really mind if they look down on people that sing within the vernacular of their country. It's very important for me that choral music is an expression of community, rather than culture, community. And that community can be anything. It can be people who are not from that country. So the thing I love about the choral festival this year is it's, it, 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 you get that lovely sense of it being part of a community in Cork um, and I love that and it very much echoes the ideas which were at the fundamental of the foundation of Aluna. And just one other thing on that, when I set it up um, I was very aware that Ireland has no indigenous form of choral singing. Now that doesn't mean that it, it hasn't had choral singing, it just means that within our tradition and um, connected to our language, our native language, there, people didn't sing in parts, in groups. Um, shannos, which would be the original form of single line singing, was very much an expression of community, the individual expressing the thoughts and expressing the ideas of the community and almost acting um, with the sense of catharsis attached to what they do. Um, so Anuna was created in that way, first of all, to create a community of singers and secondly, to create a community that reflected the community that they came from. And somebody's talking over me very loudly. I'm not sure if you can hear that. You can't hear that, no? Can't hear that, no. <laughs> okay, I'll ignore it then. Might be the next door neighbor. So um, you, you, you're saying there that um, uh, the vernacular is very important. Does, does Anuna always sing in Irish? No, Anuna sings in, I don't know, everything. 
Um, the vernacular really is not the vernacular language and it's not a vernacular accent. It's more a reflective vernacular. It's the world that we live in now. And one of the mistakes very often that's made with Anunu simply because people don't have the vocabulary to, um, to express it is that they seem to think it's some kind of a Celtic Irish choir. I mean, I can tell you now that what it is first and foremost is a community of singers and they come from 10 different countries they reflect something that contains the heritage of Ireland in it, but it's much more so what they've generated themselves. Each generation of Anuna is different. Um, since we started in 1987, the singers, we've had 250, 260 singers through the group. And every time they move through, that community changes and it becomes richer. Um, and now it's even richer because we have singers from all over the world attached to the group, each one of them bringing a part of themselves. Um, and what I suppose in many ways, the original idea of Anuna, which was um, to create something which uh, was a reflection of Irish culture, has grown with me. For me, um, Anuna is fundamentally different to everything that was there before. The music remains constant, but the actual uh, ideas behind the group develop and grow. Um, in fact, so much so that I would say it has grown out of being a choir now, in the, particularly in the last 10 years. And I, I find it very hard to classify Anuna as a choir at all. It's yeah, a group I, of I, individuals singing together. That's what it is. I was going to ask you about that, because I think recently you were, you were saying that uh, you think it's not a choir at all. Um, I mean, what, what do you mean by that? Well, let, let me throw it back at you. You, you understand the English cathedral tradition very well. That's not really about choral music, is it? That's about a community and it's about a tradition. It, it's singing within a, within a sacred space, isn't it? It's singing within a sacred space and within a tradition which is eight or 900 years old. Sure. Yeah. Well, now the problem is that if I look at your tradition and I ignore mine and I ignore my community and I simply reflect yours, then I'm not being true to myself and I'm not singling out the English tradition at all. I, uh, in Ireland, we're very strongly influenced by Kodai, by the Kodai schools. And yet it is strange that so many people who would classify themselves as academic choral professionals tend to ignore the fact that Anuna is singularly seen as the, a vocal expression of Irish choral music. They don't even look to see why that is and that i mean i'm not saying it's disappointing it just means that when i go abroad other people see it so maybe it's time particularly as we have had a hiatus for people to look at what anun is doing question it you don't have to agree with it but you at least have to understand what it is and is it possible for you to pinpoint for us what it is that that you are doing that's that's different to everybody else well, it's not different to everybody else. That's what's so interesting. It's different. It's different to choral. Well, definitely different to anything that's happening here um, by a long shot. Um, what would be most distinctive is that, um, well, there's a couple of things. The first is that I am the creator of the music. So therefore, as the artistic director, I'm also the composer and the arranger of the music. So that therefore what I want and how I feel is reflected in the music that we perform. But the second thing is that every single one of the singers in Anun is an artist. Very often singers come in who are amateur or professional and the first thing they'll say is tell me what to do. And I say, well, you're not here for me to tell you what to do. You're here to bring a part of yourself to this community. So what would distinguish us most otherwise would be that you are responsible for the sound that you make. The conductor is not responsible. Your colleagues are not responsible. You are. You are responsible for the relationship between yourself and those around you. And the combined um, act of each person in the group thinking in that manner means that the connections are not overt only, they're subliminal as well. So if you watch Anuna sometimes in performance when we are really hot, <laughs> they, 
it's like telepathy and, and, and we don't rehearse in the same way other groups do. We rehearse once. Um, we will arrive at a venue three hours before a venue with no rehearsal with a group of people that mightn't have seen each other for a year or more and we're on stage performing. And it is quite they, extraordinary. Have they seen the music before? Yes, everybody arrives with the music known because for us, the biggest problem is actually performing with music. We see that as a, it, it impedes our ability to express. Again, I'm not being disrespectful to those choirs that use music or use conductors. In fact, the opposite, but it's not the same form. And I'd say probably groups like Chanticleer or the Swingles or groups like those would be closer to us than any choir that I'm aware of. Um, and when we travel, and we give our workshops or we do whatever we're doing, it's very interesting to have people coming up and saying, we do that. And you go, yeah, so are lots of people doing it? And they say, yeah, lots of people all over the world are thinking in the same way. The problem is that the system is set up to be conservative in its outlook. And one other thing, Peter, if we consider that choral music in itself, in this form that we practice it, yours is different. I remember meeting Colin Mobby. I'm sure you're familiar with the wonderful Colin Mobby. Um, I went over to London to interview him for um, uh, just before he died. Um, and we had a wonderful conversation and it will appeal to you. He was an organist and he was playing the organ. And one day somebody came up to him and said, the conductor's not here, will you conduct? And he stood up. And he went over and he conducted because for him, he was just one of many. He wasn't a superstar. He wasn't controlling the singers. The tradition that maintained the singers allowed him to interact with them in a way that was far beyond being a conductor. He was just there to be with them as one of them. And that, I believe, was the original form of choral music. And that is not the form that is practiced today here. Thank you. Let's let's move on a little bit. You, you mentioned your uh, your own compositions there, and uh, Anuna uh, obviously frequently performs your compositions. Is it is it exclusively your your music that Anuna performs? No, we would. Um, we recently. We recently did a very large series of projects in Japan with the Japanese composer Yasunori Natsuda, um, and that's mainly associated with video games. But I think those of you out there listening to this who play video games will actually know that that form is, I mean, it's one of the highest artistic forms that exist on the planet, just not quite recognized as such. Um, so I will work with other composers. We did. Um, a decade ago, we did the um, um, the Requiem for the Lost Souls of the Titanic by the composer Philip Hammond. And we do sometimes dip our fingers in and out of other people's composition. But in general, it's mine. Sure. It's my so, stuff. Yeah. So, so, so just dwelling on, on, on your own stuff, um, it, it, would you characterize it in any particular way? Could you just tell us a little bit about, about yourself as a composer and what you're, what, what you're trying to do? Well, it was described very well in an interview done by one of the singers from my other group, Manam. Um, he said that I write music that is based in landscape, that I create landscapes with sound. Um, and I think particularly with Manam, you can, you can see that and hear that because we've taken it even a step further with Manam where it's, it's all of the choral music is visually attached to the songs. So when you look at the video, they're inexorably linked together. And I think also it's been a very good time, this breakaway, because it allows people involved in music in particular to learn new skills um, and new ways of interactive um, uh, expression. And I think that that's very important for us to develop as a form. So hopefully choral music itself will actually develop and not just, please don't go back to the way things were. I was 200 years old, we've kind of, we've moved on, I've got the t-shirt. We need new ideas, not the old stuff again. So, uh, just thinking about the landscape there, is, uh, does, uh, does one affect the other? W which comes first? Can, it's can very we hard to say. Directly to the landscape. Yeah, yeah, it's actually very, very hard to say. I mean, I've never been asked that before. Well, of course, um, it's very hard to say because um, 
funny, my daughter uh, was asking my wife about um, my composition and she was trying to understand how I did it. And it was described very well in that it's like if you remember those old mixtapes we used to have where you'd have a cassette and then you'd want to give the cassette to somebody else. So you'd use your recorder to record a copy of it and then someone else would like that and they copy it and go on. Well, composing is like creating a chain of mixtapes. The first one is great. Then the one right down at the end, number 20, is terrible. It's all distorted and some of the songs are bits are wrong in it. That's what I write down because the bit at the beginning, I can't write down. I feel it, I see it, I smell it, I touch it and I taste it. And it's almost like a feeling, it's not music. Um, it's kind of a really, really strange thing. Um, it's something else, do you know? You could call it inspiration, I don't know. Okay. And, and, and how do you go about linking the landscapes? Do, do, do you pick, do you pick uh, locations depending on the music as well? I think landscape is all about individual perception of landscape. Mm. So we, we look at, each one of us looks at a landscape and we, um, we see something different. So I suppose what it is, is it's almost like the feeling that landscape and a landscape may, can be anything. It can be absolutely anything. Um, it's more like a feeling and a moment than a landscape. But visually, when I travel to Iceland, with um, I was uh, f filming Manum there. Um, uh, Bjarni told me that, Bjarni Goodmanson, who is uh, one of the singers in the group, told me that he said it was like looking at somebody eating inspiration. You were just walking around, looking at everything. And he said, I knew you were translating that into something that you could use later on. And I hope so, because I could do with actually a bit of inspiration now. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and just, just one more thought on that. I, I know I'm thinking here, is there something that is Irish about uh, music? Is there an Irishness in music? And, and I'm sort of, it's still kind of- Very good like question. Looking yeah. at the landscape and has that affected, you know? That's a, yeah, I can see now the logic of what you were saying. Probably ties in a little bit to what I was saying earlier about vernacular. Um, when I traveled to Sedona in Arizona for the first time, um, I saw the same landscape as here. I felt the same thing. Um, I've been working with a Native American singer recently and the connection between us is at this base level so if you're going to ask well there's two things there really if you're going to ask how my music might reflect the Irish landscape the only connection between my music and Irish music is the fact that I love modality I'm absolutely obsessed with the concept of, of modality um, I remember when I was composing first I wasn't aware of Arvo Pert at all and I was only very subliminally aware of what John Taverner was doing. And then I met John Taverner and I followed up what he was doing. And then I came across Paird's work and I realized they're working with modality. So there are composers that do it. And the worst thing is to be accused of plagiarizing them. <laughs> Somebody says, that sounds like Arvo Paird. And I go, well, that was actually written before I became aware of Arvo Paird, which shows you that those languages are universal. But the second thing is, the second part of that question is that um, this idea of an Irishness in Irish music, is there an Englishness? Is there a Britishness in British choral music? There is a response to text when we're setting text, which is similar. There is a response to um, community. So yeah, I would hope, let's go back to where we were at the start. I would hope that Irish people realize that they haven't found their voice yet. And in many ways, it is sort of sad that Anuna came when it did, because it was created to lead that voice. It was created by me to do that, to create debate and create interest within the community. But it hasn't done that. Um, instead, it has created debate and interest in other countries and other communities. And I'm, I'm pleased enough with that. If it can't be at home, it doesn't matter. It's communities or communities. Yes. OK, great. So, um, uh time is time is ticking i'm conscious let's just just move on now to um maybe you could tell us a little bit about what it is we're going to see 
at eight o'clock when those of us with tickets can uh, watch the document. when people who are going to go to the site which are going to give it's Absolutely. coral, coral festival to get your tickets for the uh, the performance at eight o'clock coral.ie so what is it that we can look forward to well, I suppose in many ways I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Myself and my Anuna colleague, Nate Srudel, um, the two of us got together and we created all the images you see. We did it from scratch. We didn't know what we were doing. We bought cameras. Some of them are appalling. We, I learned to edit with Final Cut Pro. Most people have that who are into of a Mac or something similar to it. And I learned to do it myself because I realized that no one was going to come to me to, to ask me what my story was. I needed to tell my story. So at the moment, um, um, in my role as the artistic director of the Tampere Vocal Music Festival, we've sent out a press release. And I'm actually sending out a press release for a film festival. Because <laughs> it's about, for me, expressing yourself musically in video. It's lovely to see what, for example, someone like Ardu is doing. They're playing around with video and all that. Those things are really important. Learn your skills and you'll end up being able to create something like this. Yes, and, and, and in terms of the content of... of um, yes, I knew you were asking that. I just ignored the question. I, I, I know. <laughs> because, because there's footage, isn't there, from, from various um, archive performances that you, you've... Yes, in fact, what is most fascinating is that when you and I spoke about this first, about making this performance relevant to Cork, I went back and I opened a dusty Pandora's box in my attic and I thought, oh my God, all these pieces <laughs> I wrote for Cork had this new life. And some of the, I mean, they literally, what I was commissioned to write and what I brought down from the groups I brought to Cork um, went and fed on Una. So in many ways, there's a fundamental connection between the Cork Choral Festival and, and the basis of where Una started. And the video you're going to see then of the choir performing comes from two different performances, some of which has never been seen before. Um, a mixture of material we recorded in uh, for the Votches 8 Live from London series in December. And also from a concert we gave live in 2016 or 17, I can't remember. Um, and again, we filmed all, the, all of them ourselves. I still don't know how we did it. So, and I think it's pretty great to be 100% honest with you. <laughs> Let people judge. And if they want to boo and ask for their money back, they can come straight back to you. Thanks very much. And, um, and of course, the last time we spoke, you were interviewing me for, for this. You were time. awesome. You were amazing. Uh, oh, that's too kind. Um, yeah, so I, I think actually I'm the first person who, who is being shown on the, on the, uh, you are? the concert at eight. I think you see my face first. Um, which is a yes. little comforting for me, but anyway. But I think that's very important because th this is a new dawn, it's a new day. That's what it is. We mustn't look back, we must always look forward. And you did mention yourself, your interest in looking at the archive of material which has been commissioned and taking ownership of the fact that the Cork Choral Festival has had, it is known all over the world. It is one of the primary choral festivals in the world. And maybe at home, it's not appreciated enough for that. And I, I think that this online series is a great way of letting people know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so final question, what are, you, what are your plans for the future? What's next? Well- uh, Either for you or Anuna or both? <laughs> to stop working. <laughs> I'm making, I've made, a, I've made a series of films. I'm still continuing those at the moment. So I'll be continuing editing and filming until the beginning of June, and then I have the Tampere Vocal Music Festival, and then Anuna don't go on tour until um, the autumn. Um, and then I will be writing music next year and traveling to Iceland. So I, I, I don't know, I, I would spend usually all year long traveling all over the world. And it's, it's rough, it's nice to be home for, sometimes but it's nice to be away as well yeah. and hopefully we'll be in, in japan world, before yeah. christmas as well yeah, yeah. hopefully yeah. japan before christmas too and china next year it would be great to get back to china because we love touring there yeah great well i think that's all we've got time for so i'd like to thank michael very much for joining us and once again to thank you everyone yep thank you yeah uh, to remind everyone that at eight o'clock we have the anuna performance
Uh, if you haven't got your ticket already, it's corkcoral.ie. If you have, you've now got time to put the kettle on, get yourself a cup of tea, settle down, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. So, and I'll be there to answer questions as well, I think. Will I? Oh, I you're excellent. Great. I'm going to log in. I want to see the, the extraordinary I, reactions. If you think I've missed anything, then ask Michael yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Great. And the best of luck with the rest of the festival. Thank you very much. You say what you want.